name is Dawn Matthews. Welcome to the first lesson in this series on e-communication. Have you ever stopped to notice how we communicate? Communication is all about sending and receiving information. In this lesson, we will explore communication and look at how technology has made it possible to communicate using the telephone, uh, cell phones and computers. Over the next eight lessons, we will also learn about networks, the internet, email, services offered by the World Wide Web and how to use the internet effectively and responsibly. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the three components of communication, explain the term e-communication, state some advantages of e-communication. Let's start with the basic components of communication. For communication to take place, you need three things, a sender, a communication channel and a receiver. Um, this really sounds like an interesting lesson, but I'll have to find out more about it. It sure is, Salai. And let's dive straight in by seeing if you can identify the sender in this communication. Well, the sender would be the person that sends the message. And the receiver? The receiver is the person that gets the message. That's brilliant. And the communication channel? The communication channel? Well, a communication channel is the part that the message follows between the sender and receiver. A communication channel consists of one or more transmission media. So in this conversation, the message of spoken words was transmitted by telephone lines to the receiver. The telephone line was the communication channel. So Salai, how would things be different if you phoned me? Well, if I had phoned you, then you would be the receiver and I would be the sender of the message. But the communication channel would still be the same, so the telephone line. <laughs> Correct. In a conversation, the sender and receiver switch roles all the time. So in a single conversation, people are both the sender and the receiver. Correct. This is called interactive communication because the receiver can respond to the sender's message directly. We say that something is interactive when there's a two-way flow of information between the sender and the receiver. So is all communication two-way? Not all communication is two-way. Think about watching a movie. The characters on the screen are sending messages. The audience is receiving those messages. But there's no way for the audience to send messages to the people on the screen. Is this still communication? Well, I guess so. Why do you think so? Well, as long as there's a sender, a receiver and a communication channel, communication is taking place. <laughs> Salai, I am impressed. Communication is a very important part of being human. It lets us share ideas and feelings and allows us to socialize with each other. It's not surprising, therefore, that people have found many different ways to communicate. Can you think of any? Well, in this conversation we're talking, so one form would be verbal. Would writing be another form? You're on the right track, Salai. In fact, there are two main kinds of communication, verbal and nonverbal. So I suppose that writing is one form of nonverbal communication. Can you think of other kinds of nonverbal communication? Well, I suppose painting and drawing would be another form, but what about music? Yes. None of these forms use spoken words, so they are non-verbal. Can you think of any others? Hmm, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Another form of non-verbal communication is body language. For example, when two people are angry with each other, you can often see it just by looking at them. They don't have to say anything. You can tell what they are feeling just by watching their body language. Body language? Yes, body language. Body language expresses feelings by sending messages in the form of physical movements and facial expressions. So even though no words are being used, this is still communication because information is being sent by one person and received by another. Man, I never really thought about it like that before. And, of course, sign language is one way of meeting some people's special needs. It's a language like any other, but instead of speaking to each other verbally, people who would have difficulty hearing verbal conversations can communicate 
using signs. It's quite amazing how many different ways people have found to communicate. It is a lie. And because communication is so important, people are constantly finding new and better ways of sending and receiving information. Hola. Bonjour. Namaste. And one of the most exciting developments today is the use of the computer to send and receive information. These are just some of the users and you will discover many more in later lessons. You can see how quick and easy it is to communicate this way and how different kinds of information can be sent and received. When we send and receive information using a computer, which is an electronic device, we say we are communicating electronically. This kind of communication is commonly called e-communication. And just like any other form of communication, it must have a sender, a communication channel, and a receiver. Let's use an example to identify these. Well, when Nigel typed a message to Diasha, Diasha was the receiver and Nigel was the sender of the message. Yes, and the message was transmitted from the computer using a modem along a telephone line and then to his friend's computer through another modem. So the first modem was used to convert the electronic message sent from the computer into a form that the telephone line could transmit. The second modem was used to convert this form back into an electronic form that the receiving computer could process. So Salai, what was the communication channel in all this? Well, it must have been the telephone line connecting the two computers. Well done, girl. <laughs> That's correct in this case. Sometimes, however, computers can be linked without cables using wireless technology. You mean in the same sort of way that cell phones are being used? That's right. We've learned a lot this lesson. We've seen how we communicate in many ways verbally and non-verbally. How communication has changed over time and some of the ways we use a computer for electronic communication. Now for your tasks. Make a list of the different forms of verbal and non-verbal communication you use in a day. Identify the sender, communication channel and the receiver in each of these. Write a definition of electronic communication in your own words. Find at least one example of a person using a computer for communication and ask them how it helps. That's all we have time for today. And don't forget, for more information, go to our website. Until next time, happy communicating. Bye.